What's going on, Chiefs Kingdom? What is the latest injury update with some of the key Chiefs players? What are some bold predictions for 2022? Will the Chiefs finish with more than 11 wins? Plus much more with our guy, Nate Taylor, from The Athletic right after this on KCSN Update, presented by DraftKings. You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by Emprise Bank, your partner in Possible. We're back, and it's Tuesday, and that means we're joined by the Prince of Chiefs content, Nate Taylor from The Athletic, with our five burning questions. Now, since it's Tuesday and we're recording as the reports are coming out about roster cutdowns and at the risk of this show being dated uh, the second we post it, uh, we're not going to spend a ton of time on this particular show talking about the 53-man roster and some of the cuts. We will have a live show later today on Tuesday, uh, breaking that down and some more content after this. So, if you're looking for roster cut down and roster breakdown type of content, please check out those other shows. Uh, we're going to go through some different stuff with our guy, Nate, but there are a couple of big pieces of news regarding the cut downs. I do want to touch on with Nate uh, because they are very topical. And Nate, that one big surprise that I want to get into right now is the fact that uh, Danny Shelton was among one of the first players that was released by the chiefs. I think it was surprising to both of us now. Things could change over the next few days, and we'll go through that here real quick. Uh, but what was your initial reaction? We saw that Danny Shelton was one of the first players released. Yeah, um, BJ, we think that this is probably a, a calculated risk by the team, uh, a gamble that they feel like they can uh, sort of get through this transactional wave that goes on during the NFL at this time of the year. So, yes, I mean, Tuesday is like the initial roster. It's the, hey, the league is mandated that we – trim our roster 53 players. Here's what it is because every team has to fulfill that obligation. Um, but that doesn't mean that what your roster is on Tuesday will necessarily be what it is on Thursday or what it will be next week when you're actually in game preparation for the Arizona Cardinals. So Danny Shelton was somebody that the team signed in the middle of the training camp. I don't think you sign a veteran in the middle of training camp without the intentions of having him on your roster for the regular season. If everything goes okay, uh, based on my understanding, Danny did fine. Um, it's just a situation where, hey, based on numbers, based on positioning, uh, based on what his sort of stature is in the league, the Chiefs feel like Danny Shelton can go through this sort of, you know, release situation. You can bring him back. Um, you know, the assumption is, and the plan, I should say, not the assumption, but the plan is to put, you know, Blake Bell, the veteran tight end, on injured reserve, which means he will be, you know, absent for the first three to four weeks um, because he's obviously recover, recovery from his hip surgery. So that's one spot where you could add another veteran back onto it. I know you had sort of yeah. mentioned center Austin Ryder as a possible uh, candidate for that because he's gone through this before where he's yeah. been a guy that, you know, is, is obviously a veteran. And because you have certain amount of years in the league, you don't have to be in this sort of uh, waiver wire situation where right. a team could claim you, Basically, without your permission <laughs> or without your, <laughs> yeah. without you your risk. like, yeah, without your consent. So that's mostly yeah. for younger players, most inexperienced players. If you're a veteran of a certain four to five, six years, um, you can be released, and then you have your, you, you have control of your own agency um, to yeah. provide your services for your team, and then you can just say, okay, it's Wednesday. We've gone through all the cuts. The waiver wire has gone through for that particular, you know, transactional period. Hey, let's let's bring you back. And uh, we'll see you at the facility on Friday. So it's a, it's a weird situation, but yeah. I think everything we know as of right now, which is Tuesday morning, uh, Danny <laughs> Shelton should be back on the roster, barring something, you know, uh, very unforeseen occurring. Yeah, we we talked about it on this show, and I know you guys have been reporting it. Um, everybody who covers the team have been talking about, you know, the Blake Bell situation being – that's what makes it so tough when a player gets injured during training camp. And one thing I actually learned yesterday uh, from the, our guy – um, on social media that uh, if a player is injured and placed on injury reserve during training camp and then placed on IR, he's done for the year with that team. They yep. reach an injury settlement with Derek Gore. I'd never realized that then Derek Gore could go sign with another team and play. Yes. I had no idea that that was a thing. So I learned something new uh, yesterday, but um, yeah, I think it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Danny Shelton and that, and to your point, you risk 
losing young players that don't have four accrued seasons by having them have to go through the waiver process. Whereas the veterans, like you said, could be a handshake deal. They know what's going on. It's not like the veterans going to be blindsided, not know what's coming or what the plan is. Uh, but one of the young players that did catch our eye, and the only other guy I want to talk about with roster cut downs again, for hopefully this doesn't become too dated, uh, but Shane Bouchel uh, by reports has initially made the 53 man roster. Assuming that Chad Henney also made it carrying three quarterbacks, which the Chiefs hasn't done, haven't done for the last two years, did kind of catch my eye. I did not expect that to happen. Not a huge shocker. You know they like him, mm -hmm. but there's so many valuable roster spots that they must really, really like Shane Bouchel and have a very good idea that he would not survive uh, the waiver process should they, you know, uh, waive him and subject him to other teams being able to grab him. Yeah, it's really a, a twofold process, BJ. You want your young guys to play well in the preseason, <laughs> but you're also like, don't play too well because, you know, everybody in the league is watching everybody's tape. And, you know, this is similar situation that we talked about last week with, with Skyler up in my, you know, down in Miami. I'm interested to see where he will be on their 53-man uh, roster or not. But the issue is, is that Shane Bouchelle, has been in the league now for two years. He's made incremental improvement. Um, he played well in the preseason. You know, I wrote after Thursday's preseason finale in The Athletic that the Chiefs have a quarterback controversy. And, yes, it's not at QB1. Like, he's the most talented passer in the league. Uh, one could argue he's the best player in the league. We'll get to that later. But for Shane, he's really made this tough on the team. And so – my understanding is that when you look at the backup quarterback situation in the league, it's actually worse than the starting quarterback situation in the league. And that is unusual because we can always say, hey, you know, there's 10 to 7 spots where you're like, I don't trust that that starter, you know, or hey, they could easily and should try to upgrade that position as soon as possible. The backup situation in the league right now is very uh, fluid. It's very odd to me. You don't have as many established guys in backup roles, and you also don't have a ton of younger options that you can develop into that situation. Well, the Chiefs are one of those teams that have a younger player who can develop into being a you know a career backup quarterback, someone that you could trust if Patrick Mahomes isn't available for a week or two. Um, yeah. And Shane Bouchelle worked out with Patrick Mahomes all offseason. Mm -hmm. So he knows the offense. He played well in the preseason. He threw three touchdowns. Um, and when given time in the pocket, he has the arm strength and the accuracy to be effective. So um, it's it's a bit of a surprise, but this is a credit to really Shane Michel making yeah. the decision so tough on the team that you don't even want to risk losing Shane Michel. Like yeah. the, the funny thing about this is the team is willing to risk losing Danny Shelton even though we all don't think he's going to be lost no. more so than Shane Bouchelle, um, which tells you the backup quarterback situation in the league within the context of what the chiefs are trying to accomplish, given that, you know, Chad Henney is 37 and is basically on an expiring contract this season. Yeah. What it tells me is that Shane Bouchelle can look about buying a house in Kansas city. It looks like he can settle down, find some nice schools. We got Gaylor, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, he's he's going to be here for a little while. It seems like, um, all right, Nate, well, we're going to get into our five burning questions. Now I wanted to get some of the roster stuff out of the way real quick. Let's take a word from our partner here at DraftKings, And then we'll get into our five burning questions, including giving us that latest injury update. Uh, cause there's some key players for the chiefs who were banged up. Uh, so we'll get to that right after this word from DraftKings. Kansas, DraftKings Sportsbook is coming to the Sunflower State. It won't be long until you can bet on all your favorite sports from the comfort of your own home. To celebrate, all new customers will receive $100 in free bets when you sign up using code KCSN. Plus, one lucky customer will win a $100,000 free bet. That's right. DraftKings Sportsbook is giving you $100 in free bets just for signing up today. No deposits required. Soon, you'll be able to bet on money lines, spreads, props, and more with one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, DraftKings Sportsbook. Plus, you'll be entered to win a $100,000 free bet when you sign up. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up with code KCSN to get $100 in free bets to use once mobile sports betting hits Kansas. Plus, one customer will win a $100,000 free bet. 
That's code KCSN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Gambling problem? Getting help is your best bet. Call 1-800-522-4700. Must be 21. Physically present in Kansas. Eligibility restrictions apply. See terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook. Subject to regulatory licensing requirements. One per customer. $100 issued at $425 free bets. No purchase necessary for sweepstake. Void where prohibited. Ends first day DraftKings is allowed to operate in Kansas. See terms at DraftKings.com slash Kansas. All right. We're going to get to a few prop bets and a few things that uh, I've seen that are very interesting, Nate, uh, courtesy of our friends at DraftKings. But first, I want to hear uh, your take on the latest injury update because we can see the tweets. We can hear all of that. But the tone and the way that these things are explained is always the most important when you're talking about Andy Reid talking about injuries. Um, And so with guys like Juju Smith-Schuster, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Trent McDuffie being in the concussion protocol, and obviously uh, same thing with Marquez and MVS. What's the latest on the injury updates for the Chiefs? The Chiefs are truly in the right direction, BJ. They appear to be on track to be a healthy team when they play the Arizona Cardinals on September 11th. So both Trent McDuffie and Marquez Valdez-Scantling were out of the league's concussion protocol. On Monday, um, we will get an official update from Andy Reid following Tuesday's practice. So in a few hours from now, um, you know, I think for, you know, my biggest concern, I I would say on the roster right now is Carlos Dunlap. He did not play in the last preseason game because of a sore Achilles, um, but he was back at practice on Monday. Um, Now, one thing that I have to sort of acknowledge here and sort of explain is we are technically in week zero and that's a weird sort of gray area in the calendar year. So, it's not the Monday before the first opening season game. Therefore, mm-hmm. there are no injury designations as of right now. There are no participation uh, designations right now. So, you know, a guy can still practice without sort of the public watching them like we were in St. Joseph at training camp. Yet the yeah. team does not have to tell everybody after practice, well, this guy had limited, you know, repetitions based on knee injuries, toe injuries, whatever. Or, or he was or he was a full participant, you know, going into whatever the next day's practice is or obviously that game. And you guys aren't watching these practice like full practices. You get your first like 10 minutes of them stretching and kind of going through yeah. maybe some individuals. And then they kick yep. you guys out because they're starting to get to the real stuff and they don't want any secrets given yes, away. Yes, sir. Nate. Yes, sir. It's uh it's uh <sighs> whenever you watch that last practice, you're like, man. But what about what about these upcoming installs, coach? Like, what about <laughs> what about these what about these plays or these blitz packages? Well, they, you know, but well, they'll reveal them to you eventually. You know, on game day, or um, you might see some stuff in like a toned down version in like a walkthrough, like right before. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the the thing that is really interesting is you know Leo Chanel missed his first practice yesterday. We don't know why because they don't have to tell us why. Because it's not a game week. And what I always try to remind fans is the moment you can bet on a game during a game week is when they have to tell you what the injuries is. Like, if there was no betting, if there was no money over entertainment purposes, they wouldn't tell you anything, you know? No. Um, but because I, of yeah. because of the gambling situation, because of fantasy football, because of the business of, of the NFL, hey, we, we – we should probably tell you that, you know, Rashad Finn's got a groin injury. And, uh, but he did practice mm-hmm. yesterday as well. Uh, but hey, we have to tell you that just so that yeah. it informs you so that when you, you know, eventually lose your money, uh, you know, as, as much as I, much as I enjoy DraftKings, bet wisely, children. Um, you know, if you lose your money, you know, you're not, you know, the league is not subject, subjugated to, to legal sort of ramifications, if that all makes sense. Yep. All right, let's move on to the second. It's good to know uh, for Chiefs fans out there that it seems like everybody's trending in the right direction from the health standpoint outside of Blake Bell, uh, which is not a huge surprise right. at this point. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good to hear that guys like Carlos Dunlap, you mentioned, and the rest of those guys are trending like they're going to play against the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, the Chiefs, I believe, are three and a half point favorites in that game. Uh, but let's move on to 2022. And this is, Nate, what I want to know is your most bold prediction for the 2022 season? Um, I think, ooh, this is, now again, this is, you know, kind of off the top of my head, my initial reaction to these things. The 
Boldest prediction. Um, mm, Because I'm trying to think of something that is not uh, totally expected. Like Patrick Mahomes, he'll be good. Patrick Mahomes, he'll be excellent. Um, I think – I honestly think the secondary is going to be better than people realize. Um, I just have a trust about Steve Spagnuolo and Dave Merritt. And these rookies have been exceptional at every stage so far. So I don't see why I can't continue. Um, I don't know how many, I don't know how much Chiefs fans are talking about the secondary, which is a Mm -hmm. fine thing because like, it's not alarming yet. Um, and yes, you're going to play a lot of skill position players in the AFC in particular who are very good and will be a challenge. But I was really concerned around the draft about how they're going to make this work, even with the addition of Justin Reed. But I, I, I get the yeah. sense that, hey, Juan Thornhill's in a contract year. Justin Reed appears to be the leader that, that the team had hoped he would be. Um, and look, Trent McDuffie, Joshua Williams, Jalen Watson, they'll make their mistakes but they're also going to be in better position to make plays. Um, And so I think as a cohesive unit, I don't anticipate guys wide open like we saw at various points last season. Um, So I I think, I think collectively, I think the secondary will be better than, than most people probably anticipated even before training camp to where this in product is going to be in the regular season. And if that ends up being true, that's a great thing for the Chiefs because you have a lot of young guys. And we even talk about Jarius Need being like a veteran back there. And even Thornhill is in a contract yeah. there, and we're considering him a veteran. And he's not even on a second contract. So you got Dean right. Bush, you've got – and I, I think – I agree. I think Juan Thornhill is going to have a fantastic season. Loved him coming out. Know he's wired the right way. Expect him to come out and play really, really well. But uh, talk about Jalen Watson, Josh Williams, uh, Trent McDuffie. I mean, you got some young players. They go out there and, you know, they'll make their rookie mistakes. Uh, hopefully right. it's not guys right, running wide open down the field, but they got to learn what it means to play it at this level. But uh, if they end up stepping up and playing, that is a great sign for the Chiefs for the next several years with those guys on rookie deals. Um, all right, let's move on to the number three burning question that we've got for Nate Taylor here at, Le- at The Athletic. And uh, Nate, I want to give you a chance to, to kind of pub some of the – uh, stuff that you've done before. What's your fate and is switching gears a little bit. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite piece of content that you've written so far during your time at the athletic? And I, I want to, I'll give you a time, a second to think about it because one of the things I love about you and the work that you've done is that you love telling stories. And one of the things that I remember um, in covering it when I was kind of on the beat working for the chiefs is that I love telling stories because I wanted to write stuff that people could remember yeah. know, two, three weeks after they, they read it, which nowadays there's so much just clickbait. We call it clickbait <laughs> stuff. But like, and we do it like we're going to do it every week here. Cause it <laughs> draws a lot of attention, but like yeah, your power it's, rankings, it's yeah. like mock draft roundups and yeah. power rankings. It, it, a lot of people click on it and, you know, the, the analytics people would be like, Hey, great job. Or boss would be like, Hey, great job with that power rankings article. And it's like, that took me 30 seconds. <laughs> like I know a lot of people clicked on it, but I enjoyed writing the long form on the assistant coach mm-hmm. that not as many people read, but people remember bits right. and pieces uh, and nuggets in that story. I don't care if they remember who wrote it, but the whole point is to, to share a story that people don't know. And so that's what I love about you and the work that you do, because you consistently write things that um, aren't, known by everyone and things that you can remember. So now that I've given you a chance to think about it, what's the favorite piece of content that you've written um, at The Athletic so far? Man, you have to you have to push me into one, into one story, because I'll, I'll give a couple here in a minute. You but can I do think the, Yeah, you, you know how. You know I know you asked for going. one, but I'm going to give you yeah. 12. So. Yeah, you know where this was going. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I try, you know, I appreciate it. Um, I try to, you know, my job is to give you information that you, that, you're learning um, that I've learned, you know, I'm sort of a, I'm a, I'm a service to fans, uh, to our subscribers, obviously at the athletic. Um, it's been a joy to know that if I learn something that I feel is interesting, compelling, fascinating, um, I should probably share that information for people who want to know more about the athletes or the organization um, that they care so much about. I, you know, the story that, that really sort of jumps out to me, um, man, the, the, the one that jumps out to me right now is a lot of people were, I think, wondering who was Brett Veach. And this was back in 2019. Um, so he, he had elevated to the, he had elevated to the 
uh, general manager position after the 2017 draft. Uh, everybody knows he was a huge asset in, you know, identifying and maneuvering the Chiefs into selecting Patrick Mahomes with the 10th pick. In that year's draft, obviously moved from 27 to 10 as part of the trade with John Dorsey. Um, but, you know, the thing that I tried to do in this story in 2019 was explain, well, who is this guy and how did he get to this point in his career? He was the youngest general manager in the league at that time. Um, so there was a relative, you know, newness to him. Um, and what, in, you know, the most interesting thing that I found out was his, you know, own relationship with Andy Reid. And the fact that in this league, general managers and coaches, the jobs inherently create conflict. They inherently create, hey, I'm thinking about the future. You're coaching the team right now. Or, hey, I want this player. You need to give me you know, this type of, you know, player to fit my system or whatever, you know. Um, and there was a couple examples at the league at the time that I sort of expanded upon and just said why this relationship is so different. Uh, Brett Veach is very honest in saying that he works for Andy Reid. Andy Reid is the most important person in the Chiefs organization outside of the man who owns the franchise in Clark Hunt um, and who is given – Andy Reid, all the authority. Well, it, it's Clark for obvious reasons, but having an executive who knows exactly what the coach wants because they worked with the coach, their entire NFL career is unusual and it's unique. So um, there's stories about him as a scout. There's stories about him as a draft evaluator. And then obviously they were in the midst of a championship season. And it was just one of those interesting behind the scenes sort of stories about a person that reveals the entire, you know, I, I hope to the reader, but sort of reveals the behind the scenes about like why this organization is better than it had ever been at that point in the modern NFL era. And then, you know, I just remember Brett telling me like, it's going to be really cool when we as a organization, as a coaching staff, as players, when we win a Super Bowl for Andy Reid, who had not done it as a head coach, yeah. even though he had done it as an assistant with the Green Bay Packers. Um, and it's about service and relationships. And so much about this league is you watch 11 men on the field. They have to trust one another. They have to yeah. coordinate with one another in a way that is super sacrificial while also, you know, being accountable. Um, and the same thing happens throughout the entire, you know, NFL building. So I, I think for fans, it's, it's trying to, you know, shed some light on things that um, they may not be aware of that obviously when they just turn the TV on on Sundays, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've done stories about Andy Reese connection with sneakers. Uh, one of my favorite stories, BJ was trying to explain to people why Patrick Mahomes was so different. And it was because he was just creative. He wanted, you know, he took the creative path uh, was basically the, the shortened version of the story. Um, about why he was not a textbook quarterback and that that was okay. You know, it's okay to be different. Um, and you want to explain why that is. Um, but last year, you know, sometimes you want to, you want to tell somebody that you've watched Travis Kelsey all these years and little by little, there's been slight differences, slight changes. And he's matured in a way that he's the most prominent tight end in, in, in the league who has the biggest voice in the league, who has the biggest influence on his own team. He is like the whole story last year was trying to explain to people like, Hey, Travis Kelsey has just as much influence on the guys in the building as the quarterback. How many yeah. tight ends can you say that in the league? I don't think you can say that about any tight end in the league. I mean, we all love Rob Gronkowski, but like no one's looking at him for leadership. <laughs> um, and then of course in the AFC divisional round, He's telling the quarterback what to do. Like, hey, Patrick, I see this. Hey, coach, I see this. Like, trust me, you know, let me influence the game in my own way from a position that you don't really see influence beforehand. And um, obviously we all know what happened in the 13 seconds. So those are just a couple stories, but um, that's what makes the job really fulfilling to me. You know what job makes me really fulfilled, Nate, is yeah, man. my sick daughter home from school. Yeah. Anybody watching on YouTube has seen my daughter in the background. You say hi to everyone. 
not sick anymore. You're not sick anymore? Okay, she wants to go back to school. Well, uh, you never know what you're going to get uh, when you're recording with kids at home. But, <laughs> yep. uh, Nate, let's move move on to the fourth burning question. And that's great stuff. And, again, anyone out there is listening, please uh, support Nate and everybody at the, at the Athletic. They do phenomenal work. Uh, but fourth burning question here, a couple prop bets for you. Uh, found these at DraftKings. Uh, the first one, over under 11 wins for the Chiefs. It was 10 oh. and a half a few weeks, oh. a few weeks ago. Uh, and now I think it's gone up to 11. So yeah. initial gut reaction. Give me a quick answer. When you hear over. 11 wins, over. 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 Easy. Now, I, I, now, a lot of this is about health and injury status, but someone in the organization years ago, BJ, this is back when they played 16 games. Uh, was like, as long as we got coach at 15, put us down for 12. Like, that was just yeah. uh, that was just a blanket statement. Like, as long as we have coach, as long as we have 15, put us down for 12. And that was in a 16-game schedule. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, since Patrick Mahomes has been the starter, they've won 12 games at least every season. So I would go over. And I got 17 games. So, yeah, all right, here's another one. And I just – I found this one today. I thought this one was very interesting, very juicy. All right, plus 800 for Patrick Mahomes to have one regular season game with those for over 500 yards. Do you think that will happen? Man, that is – are you trying to – you like, oh, I, has that happened in his career? Uh, I'm pretty sure in 20 – we could look it up. I'm sure somebody will let us know, but yeah, I don't. It's I, not. It's, it's not a stat that I remember on the top of my head. I would say probably no. Um, as much as I love, as much as I would love to see it, as much as I would love to see all the attempts, and um, you're gonna need a play. You're gonna need a play that occurred that you didn't necessarily expect. Like, hey, we ran a slant, and all of a sudden it turned out to be a 70 yard touchdown. Or you might need two of those plays, honestly. Or hey, here's a here's a screen class you know, to Jerry McKinnon and he turned it into a 65 yard touchdown. Um, I'm going to go under BJ as much as I also find it intriguing. And as much as we all know, Andy Reid and Eric Bielemy love to pass the football. So um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with no, as much as I would again, love to sort of see the limits being pushed. All right. I'm going through it real quick. So he had 478 yards in 2018, a 443 and a 446 in 2019 Nate, i think you're right i think he hasn't done this i would have said that that was going to be one that i just take uh 462 against yeah. Tampa the next year Oof. so yeah i know yeah that's what happened last year he has not had a 500 yard game 404 410 yeah patrick mahomes has not had a 500 yard game so i would still take it I'll still, I'll still take it. You'll still take it. It's going to happen at some point. Right. And the reason, and the reasoning behind it, it, and there's a great, you make a great point as far as the explosiveness. You don't have Tyree kill. Uh, He can take a quick slant and he's the most explosive player to play in NFL history. Chiefs fans don't want to hear that right now with everything that he's saying going on. It doesn't change what he did when he was on the field for the chiefs, but we've spent a lot of time this off season talking about Patrick Mahomes ability to read a defense, how different the offense is going to look. Now they've got another intermediate option like Juju to open things up across the middle, along with the Travis Kelsey, yep. you can't bracket both guys. And then you've got MVS and you've got McColl. So you've got some speed that they have to respect and that you're either going to let the middle of the field open uh, or if you're not protecting deep, you're going to take it over the top. And so, I want to say they're going to be more explosive because I don't like using that word because Tyreek's not there, but more efficient uh, with yes. what they're trying to do. Yes. yes. And so yes, I can see, yes, I can see, and they have a tough, the schedule is brutal, but I can see a scenario where they, it's not a completely new offense, but they're going to be running a lot of route combinations and things that they probably haven't done with new bodies, new skill sets. And Andy Reid is very, very good at taking advantage of what guys do well and kind of accentuating that within the confines of what they like to do offensively. And so um, similar to when Patrick Mahomes first came on the scene in 2018, no one really know, knew what they were going to do with him. Maybe it's kind of a similar thing, and I could just see him going out there and having a huge game. Plus, I like to root for success, so I'm going to go with that one. I like that one. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's always better to say like I I'm 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 asking the the individual the team to overachieve so that it makes me look good <laughs> and I win money and like you know yeah I you know it makes everybody feel good you know but like I appreciate DraftKings presenting things that are not as easy as you think in terms of the decision making. 
Yeah, that we glad you asked the question and we looked it up a little bit more. Uh, yeah. My initial reaction was like, yeah, sure. Plus he just makes it fun rooting for every game. Starts, you know, he's got 250 yards at halftime. You're like, okay, here we go. This here we it. go. A couple here big we plays go. and we yeah. got this. You, you might uh, need overtime, right? You might need him yeah. in an overtime game where you're like, hey, <laughs> rooting for a, overtime. <laughs> that's another 75 yards that we can that we can uh, that we can add on to. So hey, team comes know. down the last two minutes, ties it up, and you're like, you know what? We're all right. Hey. Yeah, let's We're do okay. it. All right, let's go on to the fifth burning question. And this one, I cringe as I ask, but it's popular. <laughs> People are talking about it. Um, the NFL Top 100. Oh. Every year. Every year people get all upset about it and they're like oh players vote players don't vote. I can attest players get the option to vote on these things. Do they do it? Right. Every team's a little bit different how much the PR staff really pushes for these guys to vote for these things. Uh, and then they don't, and then they're mad when it doesn't look the way that they want. Uh, so Chiefs have two guys that are currently on their team uh, that went in the top 100, and Travis Kelsey at number 10. No, three. It's three. I me. think it's three, because Chris Jones was 39, I believe. Okay, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Three. Chris Jones at 39, Travis Kelsey at 10, and then Patrick Mahomes at number eight. Does it matter? I mean, Is, no. Does it affect but- – do you think it act genuinely bothers the player? I know I heard that yes. you know MBS was asked um, about whether or not he had a conversation with Patrick Mahomes about it. I don't think it's the thing that those guys would talk about, and if it is, it's not something they'd probably talk about publicly. But do you think it would bother him? Um, does it matter? No. Does it bother him? Probably. Um, no. One of my what one of my other favorite stories, BJ, is. The lead, like the first sentence was Patrick Mahomes doesn't forget. And this was in relation to the primetime game against the Chicago Bears in 2019, where it's just like, hey man, I don't I don't forget these things. Yeah. Like, I don't like no. Um, so if he feels that way about his own draft class, and if he's you know putting things on, you know, technological notebooks, <laughs> then, yeah, I think it does bother him. I think it probably adds, it's just a reminder of like, okay, yeah. you know, he's heard what people have said about him without Tyreek Hill. He understands that like, hey, you know, here's what everybody's saying about the division. Maybe they're going to take the division crown from us. It's just another reminder, in my opinion, about like, hey, um, he's probably better than eight. It's astonishing to me that, look, we, we can all, you know, I know Chiefs fans don't probably love this person, but we all understand the iconic, legendary player that Tom Brady is. Ladies and gentlemen, this was not the best player in the league last year. Come on. We all yeah. knew this. And we all know who the best player in the league was last year. Because on third down, he pulled a man while being blocked. You're not getting that yard. And then on fourth down, he said, let me go in the Super Bowl. And he did it, okay? Aaron Donald, by the way, this is another random statistic that I will always remember until it changes otherwise. Aaron Donald is the only human being to strip sack Patrick Mahomes twice in an NFL game. You get him once, that's an accomplishment. Shout out to you, Micah Parsons. You get him twice, that has never happened unless it's Aaron Donald. So for me... I always go to the point of, like, there's no player like Aaron Donald. There's no player like Patrick Mahomes. Yes, Justin Herbert and Josh Allen are quickly, you know, coming up behind him. Mm -hmm. But, look, Josh Allen was ranked low. I mean, like, Justin Herbert was ranked low. Chris Jones is not the 39th best player. Like, what are we doing? But, hey, um, if if that just reminds you, if that just gets you in the right mental space to harness all your talents – for September 11th, then Lord, then, then Lord, it was serviceable to your end result. But no, he's he's no. not the eighth best player, and it doesn't matter because the game start. And that's the best part yeah. about this, BJ. When we get to like next week, and it's really game week, and you get to like the 11th or even the Thursday night opener between the Bills and the Rams, mm-hmm. all the talking got to stop because yeah. we're all gonna see what you actually can and can't do on the field 
I've talked about this with Nick Lecky for years um, on our podcast was in the trenches when we were out the chiefs and then yeah. we left, it was outside the trenches <laughs> is that never underestimate the ability of a professional athlete to find chips wherever they can. And to, to play this game and you see it cause you've been around these guys. It takes such a toll on their bodies, mentally, physically to get through stuff that you got to, you know, come up with these things to motivate yourself to get through the thing. So their ability yeah. to, I mean, we talk about with Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, and I think Patrick Mahomes the same way. They're going to look for reasons to motivate themselves of people doubting them and trying to prove people wrong and prove other people right. Yeah. Depending upon what kind of <laughs> how you carry chips, but this has been an off season full of chips <laughs> that he could just, it'll carry him for a few years with all the crap that's been said. And I'm here for it because I, want Patrick Mahomes hearing this stuff and because we know the way that he's wired and that do I think it's going to bother him to the point at which it's going to he's going to press and try harder and it's going to be a negative thing no but in the back of his mind is the petty Mahomes and he's counting on the sideline like I'm here for that yeah like, that's the stuff that I want to see so uh I I don't to your point I don't think any of that stuff matters but um it's if it motivates him a little bit more I'm excited about that and I'm really excited Nate as we wrap this show up uh, to see, and we get to December, January, get close to playoff football. The Chiefs win the division for the seventh straight year. Do you have any idea how badass all of the hype videos are going to be when you start cutting back to clips from the summer and like off season and all the chargers and all these <sighs> national media prognosticating all the, the Chiefs downfall because of what the AFC West did? I cannot wait for those videos to come out because they're going to be fantastic. And all the content creators out there have probably been saving these clips in some folder somewhere. And <laughs> we're going to, we're going to go back to these flashbacks uh, when you see, you know, the chiefs holding the Lombardi trophy above their heads and go back to all the people that doubted them. Yeah. But um, I'm here. I'm here for that. I, I knew, I knew a guy outlandish BJ when somebody from ESPN, I'm not going to name who they are. But someone from ESPN said Patrick Mahomes is not a top five quarterback, and that's when, like, you know what? I need to, I need to take my glasses off. This uh, ESPN, am I, am I, I know am one I, guy who said that too. Am I seeing what I'm seeing on this screen and hearing what you're saying? And you know, you know, yeah, Patrick Mahomes is not a top five quarterback. So, you know, Patrick Mahomes has the responsibility of the team, of the play, you know, the playbook, of the game planning, um, alongside the coaches. But yeah, I can assure you, BJ. And I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that there are people in his life who will remind him of <laughs> the things that yeah. have been said over the course of the past several weeks. They retweet all of them. So, you know, they're seeing it, you know, they're hearing it. And again, I don't think it's going to be a bad thing. It's a good thing. Carry those chips. But yeah, man, I, to your point, I can't wait till we get into the season with these videos. So we can get more into five burning questions about what's going on and what's real and not asking questions about the NFL top hundred and, uh, and other things. But Nate, we appreciate your time, my guy. And again, everybody out there, please go to The Athletic, subscribe, make sure you're reading all Nate's stuff. Uh, phenomenal follow, phenomenal um, uh, member of the Chiefs content community. So uh, please support them and what they've got going on. And we appreciate your support of what we're doing here at KC Sports Network. We know there's a lot of places to get great Chiefs content. We appreciate being one of those places that you stop to get it. So until next time, and don't forget, at KC Sports Network, we will have plenty of of roster breakdown content. Uh, we didn't want to date this, this podcast too much. So uh, make sure you check all of that out, but thank you for Nate. I'm BJ. We'll see you next time.